You know what I just recently discovered? There are a lot of weird and bizarre Lord of the Rings games out there. Like, did you know that EA made a Final Fantasy X clone of Lord of the Rings? But that's a fairly well-known game. Nah fam, we can be way more obscure than this. And the best way to do that is looking at the insane world of Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color and Sega Genesis bootleg games. Trust me, we're about to delve deep into some weird, obscure and absolutely bizarre Lord of the Rings games. We got Castlevanias, Metroidvanias, fighting games and much more. So here we go! We begin with a Game Boy Color game called King of Ring, a surprisingly ambitious game for the system. This is a full-blown Metroidvania with some RPG elements added in. And you know what? It's not bad actually. Honestly, its biggest issue is its jankiness, which makes sense as King of Ring was created by Syntax. That's the same studio behind the surprisingly good Metal Gear Solid Beat'em Up and Castlevania DX, which was a Metroidvania for the Game Boy Color complete with a map, inventory system, shops, and even a level up and experience system. So yeah, I'm not surprised that King of Ring is ambitious, as that was their whole MO back in the day. In fact, I have some behind the scenes footage of Syntax making Game Boy Color games. Come on you guys, there it is right there in front of you the whole time, you're dereferencing ML Pointer, open your eyes. Yeah, that seems about right. Anyway, King of Ring starts with an opening detailing the movie's plot, but it seems that most of it was machine translated, so uh, good luck figuring that out. And you start out playing as Frodo in a Final Fantasy style overworld map. As you enter each area, the game then switches to a side-scroller. Now the cool thing here is that as you progress, you'll unlock new characters like Aragorn and Gandalf, who looks uh, familiar. The cool thing here is that you can switch between them on the fly by hitting the start button. And each character has their own stats and abilities. Like for example, Frodo can slide under passageways to reach new areas or secrets. And he's also got the fastest combo. Stika, I, I, mean, I mean Gandalf, can attack from a distance and has a healing spell. But he's also the slowest and least nimble character. Aragorn has the most powerful attack and can destroy walls to open new areas. And you can also eventually unlock Legolas, who features a double jump and shoots arrows. But I could not get that far, as this game is stupidly difficult. So here's footage of someone else playing as him. Now, the health bar is shared between all characters. So for example, if you receive damage while playing as Frodo and then switch to Aragorn, your HP will remain the same. But some characters like Aragorn will take less damage, so it's a question of balancing out each character and shifting between them as the need arises. Another cool thing is that you'll pick up items that upgrade your abilities. Like for example, Aragorn can break walls. But for some of them, the game says that you need a special item to do it. And that is pretty cool. Even the music is pretty good in some areas. This is a legit impressive game. Unfortunately, it suffers from two major issues. The first is that enemies are constantly respawning, so it can be a slog to progress through and often it's just best to walk past them. The other is that the hit detection can be a little janky. And you also gotta love the dialogue here, like when Saruman convinces Gandalf to join them and Gandalf responds with, you are no longer my best friend. 
friendship ended with Saruman. Now Frodo is his best friend. But overall though, yeah, this is not bad actually. A little janky like Syntax games tend to be, but I say give this one a shot. Syntax would later return to the GBA with Lord of the Rings 4. Yeah, I bet you didn't know there was a fourth movie in Peter Jackson's trilogy, huh? Now don't you feel them? Anyway, this game is… bad and familiar. And I don't mean the graphics which were clearly ripped from Jewel Master for the Sega Genesis. No, I mean the gameplay, HUD and music all seem familiar. Oh yeah! This is the exact same game as that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles bootleg game I took a look at a few years ago. And boy, they did not improve this game between releases. Ok, so as it turns out, the Game Boy Color was often considered as the golden age for a lot of these bootleg game studios. And once the GBA rolled around, their game quality took a nosedive and boy, it really shows. Ok, so this is just a straightforward platformer, but a terribly executed one. For one thing, you only have two songs in the entire game, which keep looping over and over. And in fact, the music will often cut off, leaving you with nothing but sound effects. The graphics, as I mentioned before, were all ripped from Jewel Master and Castlevania. And your controls are stiff to say the least, and when you attack, you shoot a fire wave. But the hit detection is abysmal. For some reason, during this period, Syntax would just keep cloning this game and concept over and over again, but changing the graphics and assets to anything that would be even remotely popular. So you had Lord of the Rings, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Crash Bandicoot, Sonic the Hedgehog, Mario, honestly, the list goes on. In fact, I'm pretty sure I found the behind the scenes footage of Syntax making Game Boy Advance games. Yeah, that seems about right. Back in my Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles video, I said that this was the worst game I've ever played. And playing it again now, I stand by my word. Avoid this one at all costs. It's a shame that Syntax did not just make another Castlevania game. Well, Syntax may not have made another one, but Vast Fame sure did with a game called… something. Though this time, it would be closer to a classic Castlevania game. And it's interesting too, because this game received two very different versions, but I'll get to that. And if the name Vast Fame seems familiar, it's because this is the same studio responsible for making the surprisingly good bootleg Mega Man games, which I've already covered and even the recently dumped Game Boy Color SNK fighting games, which I've also covered. Anyway, this game is a platformer which seems to be heavily inspired by Castlevania, though as far as I can tell, there are no sub-weapon pickups. You do get coins and health recovery items, but the coins don't really seem to do anything here. My biggest problem with this game is that it has too many pits to jump over, many of which require really precise jumps. Overall, it feels a little boring, but not a bad game by any means. But wait! There's more! Like I said before, this game actually received two versions, and the one we took a look at was actually a re-release which removed content and changed some of the graphics to resemble Lord of the Rings. Turns out that the original game was actually much closer to Castlevania in style, though it would also draw some inspiration from two other games, Konami's Getsu Fumaden and Namco's Genpei Tomaden for the arcade and PC engine. And you know what? This version is way better. I mean, stylistically, it's not even a competition. It starts out with an opening featuring Castlevania-like cultists doing… 
uh, something before your call to action. You're then brought to an overworld map where you can select which mission you want to tackle with different missions opening different paths in the world. The map also contains safe points which look cool as heck, as well as weapon and item shops, which you can buy to permanently upgrade your character. And these are important too, because you'll run into stages that block your path until you get the correct upgrades to surpass them. Your character was also redrawn to resemble Simon Belmont with your sword being replaced with a whip. And I mean, just look at it! The art style and backgrounds look a lot more interesting, with the music being pretty good actually. Though that's not surprising, because Vast Fame would often employ the Game Boy Mega Man 5 sound engine, and a lot of these sound effects sound pretty similar to Mega Man. This game is cool as heck, and you owe it to yourself to try it. Once again, Vast Fame shows us why they were among the royalty of bootlegs. Oh, but wait, we're not done with Vast Fame yet, because they would return with yet another Lord of the Rings game. This time for... Oh, the Game Boy Advance. Okay, here we go. Huh, this one's... not bad, actually. Okay, let's back it up a bit. Lord of the Rings Return of the King is a shooter for the Game Boy Advance based around Tolkien's book and their Peter Jackson movies complete with anime profile pictures. Ah, yes, Lord of the Rings, my favorite anime. The Eye of Sauron now turns to Gondor. That's really an interesting color. I didn't know it was red. And the game also has anime style screen filling attacks. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I can't even finish this sentence. I mean, I think this is Lord of the Rings because the story and translation here makes no sense. With brilliantly executed prose like when introversion Hobbit Rogens got a ring with his cousin Bilbo, or the expeditionary have five people, there is Hobbit Rogens, the human warrior Shared Shared, and the wizards Grand the Grand. <laughs> Gandalf is called Grand the Grand. <laughs> oh my god, I can't. I just can't. <laughs> Oh, and apparently, they replaced Legolas with Alias, and they are going to Judgment Day Mountain. Oh my god, the intro alone makes all of this worth it. Anyway, you got 5 characters to choose from, all of which have different attack styles, movement speeds, weapon power, and number of hit points. And ha, look at Aragorn here! Oh my god, is that Frodo? Oh, this game is just too good. Anyway, me loving wizards, I had to go with Gandalf, I mean Granda Granda. You are then shown a world map complete with a spinning ring taken from Sonic the Hedgehog. And before you begin each mission, you have a small story segment which, yes, they are just as incomprehensible as you'd expect. Once you start the game though, this isn't bad actually. You can move and shoot in all 8 directions and enemies will often drop weapon power-ups which makes your attack stronger on top of letting you shoot in more directions. You also have a button that lets you swing your sword or cane which deflects bullets and defeats enemies instantly. And if this is starting to sound like Pocky and Rocky to you, it's because it is, as this game is using the same engine as Pocky and Rocky with Becky for the Game Boy Advance. Funny thing is that rumor has it that Vast Fame actually acquired the game engine for this game legitimately, as in, they actually bought the game engine from the developer or publisher, which, uh, wow. I am actually really impressed. It clearly shows that Vast Fame had plans to go legit at some point, and that they were just trying to make the best out of a poor situation that comes with being in the wrong country at the wrong time. Anyway, 
This game is actually really funny to play when you consider the source material, like Hey, remember when Gandalf was shooting fireballs at a snowman in the desert? Remember that from the movie? How about that time Frodo was throwing daggers at snake women dressed like Japanese schoolgirls? Remember that? Or when they fought a 12 foot tall Saruman who is now an elf for some reason? And how about that time when Frodo began to shoot fireballs from under his coat destroying an army of Nazgul? Oh come on, you gotta remember the part where Gandalf fought against a giant crustacean. So here's this giant enemy crab. So, is this game as good as Pocky and Rocky? No, of course not. But that also does not mean that the game is bad. And in my opinion, it's worth checking out. Out of all the games we're taking a look at today, this one is most likely the most well known. And this is Lord of the Rings 3 Return of the King for the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive. This is a fairly well known bootleg and one I've seen being talked about several times. And yeah, as you can tell, it's a one on one fighting game. I've seen some people say that this is a pretty underrated fighting game. And boy, is it ever not! Let's be clear on one thing, bootleg games can be good and have been good. I've covered a few myself. Top Fighter 2000, for example, is a bootleg fighting game for the Mega Drive which I've already reviewed and stars Mohamed Ali and Michael Jordan fighting against the likes of Goku and Ryu from Street Fighter. And that game is honestly an underrated gem for the system. But this? No, this is not a good fighting game. Not only do you have a poultry 6 fighters to choose from, the AI is completely broken, as you can win most battles by just getting near your opponent and spamming the punch button. Although some of these designs are just hilarious, like damn bro, Frodo hit that gym hard, and Eowyn apparently learned Kung Fu between the second and third books. I'm also pretty sure that there is no final boss or even an ending to this game, as the game kept pitting me against fighters I had already defeated. By the time I had to fight against this dude for the third time, I was ready to quit. Although it is kinda funny how this stage is using the Final Fantasy VI town music for its theme. <laughs> But then again, this is a Glory Sun game, and they love to recycle songs from other games, other bootleg studios, and even some of their own games. And in fact, the reason why this game looks so weird is because that this is actually a sprite hack of a different bootleg game, called Tenchuo Kurao Tree Sangoku Gaiden, also known as Chinese Fighter Tree, which is a bootleg fighting game developed from the ground up for the Sega Genesis. It's not really well known which bootleg studio made this game. All we know is that it's using the sound engine from the East's High Seas Havoc, though at least we now have an explanation for Frodo's design here. So yeah, this one's not really worth getting into. There are better official and unofficial fighting games for the system. You want a bootleg fighting game for the Mega Drive that is actually good? Try Top Fighter 2000 instead. You'll thank me later. And there you have it. These are, as far as I know, every bootleg Lord of the Rings game that has been dumped. I know that there are a few more out there, namely Lord of the Rings The Fellowship of the Ring for the original Game Boy by Soft, which has yet to be done. But what's most surprising about this is that some of these games were actually really good. Vast Fame's Game Boy Color entry was by far the best of the bunch. But Syntax's Metroidvania game definitely had a lot of potential that was sadly held back by jankiness. I was expecting the games to be beat'em ups or light RPGs like the official GBA games, but no, they went their own route and I love that they did that. 
And if any of these games seemed interesting to you, you can find most of them on handheldunderground.com, with the Mega Drive game usually being available where you'd find your usual Sega games online. But for my part, all I gotta say is, give these games a chance, you might just be pleasantly surprised. Hey everyone, thank you for watching Stika's Retro Corner. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to like, comment, subscribe, hit that notification bell and share this video. All that fun social media stuff. And you can also support me on Patreon. It may not seem like it, but even one dollar is a really big help in keeping this channel going. I would also like to thank my newest Patreon supporters, Ken Williams and Vile Disgorgement. Damn, that's one violent name. But more importantly, thank you for helping make the channel better. Anyway, I hope you have a great day. Bye!